Hello, everybody. It's Brian here. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I wanted to do a video regarding crystal grids. Um, I've been incorporating crystal grids into my personal life, into the business, um, and they're quite amazing. They have they they leave so much room for creativity and. Um, like supercharging, I feel like your space, supercharging your your intentions and what it is that you are um, really intending on for the crystals to do. So they're a wonderful tool to use. And I wanted to talk about that a little bit today um, in terms of like, what are crystal grids? Now, in terms of that, what we use is we use certain sacred geometries with crystal grids. And within those geometries, we also use certain crystals or gemstones. Um, now, there's not any one specific kind of gemstone to use. Of course, I'm going to go through that a little bit later in the video video. Um, but again, like clear quartz is a really good one along with a bunch of others. But you do want to use multiple different gemstones. And ultimately, what we're doing is we are creating a crystal grid in like a geometry, a sacred geometry shape. And then we put certain intentions behind that. So it really amplifies the intention um, of what you're looking to manifest or bring into your reality. So if crystal grid is something you guys are interested in, stay tuned, and we're going to get into it. The history of crystal grids, the origin of sacred geometry really traces back to ancient Egyptian and Mesopotamia times. So the sacred geometry is a key component in creating your crystal grids. And it really helps with the crystals to amplify that energy and work on manifesting a desired outcome here. So sacred geometry has really played a significant role all over history, all throughout history, I should say, within art, architecture, and spirituality. And incorporate, incorporating sacred geometry and crystals into our lives, creating this beautiful grid that is really wonderful for some creativity, um, just putting all your thoughts and your intentions into these certain desired outcomes can really amplify and supercharge certain areas of our life here. So really, it's helping to redirect our energies away from any like stagnancies or stressful um situations within our daily life and really stop and bring us awareness and connection to all consciousness. So with sacred geometry, it's really the blueprint of creation. And we're going to go over some of the really um, amazing and more popular layouts that you can use for your crystal grids as well. So how does a so how do crystal grids really work? So these crystal grids really harness certain frequencies and subtle energies that will radiate from your crystals and from your sacred, sacred geometry here. So they really draw in energies or send out energies. It really all depends on what your intentions are and how you're programming them. Um, I can't say this strong enough, but the main ingredient to making these amazing crystal grids um, like work at their maximum potential is you your intention so your intentions behind your actions is everything crystal grids are a wonderful tool for strengthening and making certain goals kind of you know achieving closing that gap and achieving goals on certain manifestations it's kind of um, similar to like a we can say a vision board um, it's another creative way to bring certain things into our reality and attract that energy into our into our our life here so the main thing we want to do is we want to make sure that there are intentions behind these grids. You need to program them with what it is you're trying to manifest. And you can program them to bring love in your life. You can program them to bring abundance into your life or whatever the matter is, you know, making your, expanding your business. It can be really anything you desire. It's just about getting into, I would say, kind of a state of meditation as well and programming those intentions, as well as when you're setting them up. Set these crystal grids up with like integrity here. 
Um, as you're doing this, think of what it is you're creating into your reality. So it's kind of that pulling in that energy and allowing it to radiate outwardly. Because yes, crystals themselves do carry lots of um, we can say healing frequencies and different different energies as well, but they're not going to be very powerful if you are not putting an intention into them. So again, make sure you are putting your intentions into your lovely crystal grids. <laughs> So there are many different types of crystal grids available out there, but a few we can go over today um, include certain sacred geometry. And a few of those types would be the Flower of Life, Metatron's Cube, and the Fibonacci Spiral as well. So these crystals will have a specific resonance and they'll transmute that energy from the grid. And if we're looking at working with certain sacred geometry, for example, the Flower of Life, this is said to contain vital information in all living things. It's really the shape of creation and the interconnectedness of all life. And with the Metatron's Cube, that contains all the geometric shapes in the universe. And it's kind of that building block for physical matter. It really provides that connection between the divine. Um, and if we want to look at, for example, the Fibonacci spiral and work with that crystal grid, um, that's a beautiful shape. The shape is found all throughout nature and the interconnected with interconnectedness within nature and the universe. This really signifies growth, evolution, and divine order. So again, there's many other grids out there you can research and use for your crystal grids, but these are just a few of my favorites. So what crystals should you use for your grid? Now, there are a couple different ways you can choose which crystals you would like to use for your grid, but I really find the step to be a personal preference. I don't really believe there's a wrong way, right way in this one. Um, there's, in terms of doing this, you can do this um, based off of the crystal's properties. So you can research what that crystal really symbolizes and represents, and you can use that. For example, say you wanna make a crystal grid to increase wealth and finances, and you match that up with, okay, well, which stones represent wealth? Which stones represent financial abundance? So you could go with, for example, a green adventuring or a citrine, um, green jade, those kind of um, elements, because those frequencies of those stones match up with what you're trying to manifest. That's one of my ways I like to do it, but there's other ways as well. You could also do that based off of dowsing as well. If you want to use your pendulum and see which crystals would be beneficial for your grid, that's another great way to use them um, or to pick your crystals, I should say. Um, and intuitively, you can't go wrong with that. You sit, you meditate for a bit, or you have a, your box of crystals in front of you and you intuitively allow whatever stones to speak for you for that specific purpose. So again, there's really no right way, wrong way on this step of your crystal grid. It's, it's really a personal preference and it's whatever you feel guided to do here. Now, before I fully move on to the next um, topic here, I feel like some people kind of steer away from crystal grids because maybe they think or they have this um, idea that they need tons of crystals to make a crystal grid. And all those little crystals, they can be pricey, especially if you're you know, buying them, um, like a large amount of them. So in terms of doing a crystal grid, don't let that deter you because you can really make a beautiful, effective crystal grid with only a few stones. So there's no real hard rules in creating your crystal grid and don't feel deterred like you have to go out and buy 50 different crystals. That's truly not the case. You can make a really wonderful crystal grid with four or five crystals, and you can make this really effectively as well. It's all about the intentions. Remember that. So 
Um, before we get to the next part on how to store your crystals, some other people also like to talk about whether or not I should use rough stones versus polished stones. Again, I really feel like this is a personal preference. I love to do both. I have some crystal grids that are rough stones and some that are nice, beautiful polished stones as well. With those rough stones, you have more of a kind of forceful it's um it's a more of a, a stronger, I guess you could say robust energy that comes off of them or the subtle or the polished ones are kind of more of a softer, subtle energy as well. Not to say one is better than the other. It's all personal preference in my opinion. Um, so again, feel intuitively which stones you feel guided to use for your beautiful crystal grid. And again, remember, there's no right way or wrong way. It's this beautiful art piece that you are making, and it's your intention behind it. What is the best way to store your crystals? Now, again, this is another personal preference way. There's many different ways, such as you can use them, or you can store them in a you know, a plastic container, you can store them in a wooden box, you can put them in the little cloth pouches. It's again, really up to you. Uh, what I will say is again, take note that these crystals do take on energy. So it is just important to make sure you're cleansing those crystals before you do use them or set your intentions for your grid, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, <clears throat> but again, my biggest, I think, takeaway from this topic is it's not, there's not a right way or wrong way to store them necessarily. I would recommend if you are working with crystal grids that have polished stones versus crystal grids that have maybe rough stones to keep those separate because you don't want the polished ones to get all scratched up um, and kind of banged up from being stored with the rough crystals because they do have those sharp jagged edges. Um, but again, store them where you, as, as you need, if you, if it's easier, I do personally have mine in a container box. I do have some of mine in a wooden box, but I started getting quite a large collection and it was just easier for me to put them in a plastic, um, a plastic container. So um, I just make sure it is important to kind of keep them in a cluttered free area because they do, these crystals do take on energy. So if they're going to be sitting in a, you know, cluttered area, make sure you're cleansing these again before we use them for your crystal grids. But we're going to talk about next on how to cleanse these crystals um, and prepare them for your crystal grid. All right, so now how do you cleanse your crystals for your crystal grid? Now there's many different ways again to do this. And again, there's no necessarily right, right way, wrong way. Um, I will go over a couple of things. So if you are a beginner in terms of um, understanding the crystals and the hardness scale of them. There are certain methods you might want to steer away from without doing a little bit of extra research. Um, for example, sometimes sea salt or salt water could be really good for cleansing crystals. Again, you don't want to put just any old crystal in sea salt or in um, a water base. Um, clean, for cleansing properties because um, it can damage the crystals. And, and examples of that would be um, stones that have a hardness sale, I believe of seven or under. Um, and that would be things such as calcite, selenite, those types of crystals you do not want to cleanse with salt water or a water spritz or water spray or anything of that matter. So do a little bit of more, uh, I think, digging into the, every specific crystal. I know off the top of my head, like calcite, selenite, those are some big ones in terms of you don't want to put those in water. But some really simple ways that you can cleanse your crystals would be using incense such as Palo Santo. You could use sage, just incense in general. Um, I use this incense all the time. I'm a big fan of them. Um, specifically, just incense and Palo Santo are a big one for myself. But you can use moonlight. You could use sunlight. There's meditations you can use to clear the crystals with your intentions and your power of thought as well. So there's many different ways that you can do this. Um, 
again with sunlight some of the crystals you want to be a little bit more cautious of because i mean for example amethyst can fade in the sunlight and if you've got a nice beautiful amethyst crystal sitting on the window getting that beautiful sunlight all the time it is known to fade and I mean, it might not look as sparkly and beautiful after some time. So there are some kind of um, tips in terms of not wanting to do certain things with certain crystals, but the, the easiest, I would say the easiest way as well would be through incense. You can also actually um, clear your crystals with um, feathers as well. So if you have a feather, you can brush away any of the negativity within the crystals and clear that out as well. Um, if you do work, another one of my big favorites are I love the samples. So if you are, um, that's something that you have available at your fingertips and you have some sound bowls or healing instruments at home um, you could use sound healing to help cleanse the the um, gems and your stones as well on top of that reiki as well reiki works great if that's something that you're already into um, and on top of that there's a list that goes on here um, there's also crystals that also cleanse your your other crystals and those would include selenite for example so I'm I'm a big user of selenite I really enjoy it I think it's a beautiful crystal and they're great cleansing citrine is also really good as well so um <clears throat> I've got my I have bowl of crystals here and I always just put selenite around there and that helps cleanse the energy of them as well so some simple methods include sage palo santo incense working with other crystals to clear that such as selenite citrine um, i'm sure there's some more of them but those are the two big ones clear quartz sorry though that's another big one as well um and just other methods that um can also help in terms of like sunlight moonlight as well your meditation that thought of clearing the intentions um, of any negative energy and just giving it a nice a nice uh, fresh energy as well so there you have it um again i think my my major tip would be in terms of if you're cleansing them especially with salt water or some kind of water in the river for example that can be a wonderful way to cleanse them just make sure you know which crystals not to cleanse all right So once you guys have discovered what kind of grid you want to work with, for example, the seeds of life or the flower of life, um, sacred geometry, you've got your crystals all picked out, you've got your crystals cleansed now, um, we're going to talk about programming your crystals. And the so how to program your crystals. Again, I might be sounding like a bit of a broken record at this point, but it's all about our intentions. All our intentions really shape our reality. And this is very, very important when we're working with our crystal grids. So when you focus on your intent through the crystals, you are programming them. Um, and remember, you are the one that is giving your crystal grid the power and the energy. It's not the other way around. Um, some people think that all the magic comes from the stones themselves. And although stones have a wonderful frequency, each one is very unique um, and they can, they can contribute and have healing properties. We are the ones giving that stone the power. So again, when we do that, we amplify its ability to help us on our desired outcome. When I was taking my crystal certification course, um, the teacher said something very interesting. And she's like, one of the most common questions that is she gets is, what does this crystal do? Like somebody will, like everybody is so curious to like find out what this crystal is for or what this crystal is for. I mean, because they all have different meanings and different properties, but it's actually a very simple answer. It does what you tell it to do. Um, crystals are programmable. So again, when we are working with our crystal grids, how to program them through your intentions. Be specific. The universe likes those specific requests that you send out there, that vibration. 
Um, so again, for example, like say you you're having a health issue, but it's pertaining to you have headaches. Don't just do a crystal grid and say, I want to feel better. Or you know what I mean? Like, okay, crystal grid, help balance my chakras. No, be specific. Be like, all right, program this crystal grid to clean and eliminate your headache or your head fog, your dizziness, whatever it is, be very specific. So that's one thing. Um, align yourself when you're doing this. Um, I like, it's almost like do this with integrity, make your crystal grid. It's like an art piece. Put your, put your heart into it, put your creativity into it and align with the frequencies sitting there in meditation, holding the crystals as well, just feeling the vibration, feeling the energy of that. Um, and visualize your intent, visualize what it is that you're, um, you're, you're manifesting here. Um, and then also it's a big one as well. So sense that, that what you are putting into that energy for that crystal grid is, is done. Know that it's done. You need to surrender and trust the process after that. So again, very much like certain manifestations. Um, so visualize it as vividly as you can bring all those senses in when you're programming your grid and feel it as as in this tense in this moment now this is done this is manifested um, and just then allow and surrender to to the universe and allow it to unfold the way it's meant to be. So now let's move over to um, how we're going to place the crystals on that crystal grid and activating it. So how to place the crystals on your grid and where is the best spot for them? Now, again, these crystal grids are very unique. They're very much an art piece. So feel free to do whatever you feel guided to, to use for your grids. Now, once you have... Um, got your sacred geometry that you would like to use for this, you'll kind of notice crystal grids have um, different stones around them. Now, again, you, you really can use one single kind of stone, such as rose quartz, clear quartz, whatever you feel guided to do. But typically you want to choose three to five different types of stones that kind of integrate with each other very nicely. So if you look at the center of this up the grid there'll be a center stone and this is kind of you can label it as an amplifier the this is going to draw the energy in and outward through the grid and you can use any kind of stone here again you can use clear quartz rose quartz it's really up to you um and again some people like to put larger stones in the middle some people put smaller personal preference I usually do tend to put a bit of a larger stone in the center because that's my main amplifier my main focus and again like clear quartz is a really amazing one for this um, then again you can see the surrounding stones so they kind of go at intersecting points up the grid where you can see where the lines intersect and again intuitively put them in areas that you feel guided to do so uh, then you want these surrounding stones are kind of like the conduit of energy. So you'll have your center stones as the amplifier, your surrounding stones on the second layer. And then there's also another layer you can continue to go out and out more and more. It's really, you can make this as big or as small as you would like it. But the, the third layer we can call as kind of the intention stone. So these are going to reflect the results and they absorb the energy based on, absorb and they refine the energy based on the other stones in the metal, in the metal and the surroundings. Um, so they're really is many ways to set up your grid. Um, and in terms of where to place this grid, what's the best spot for it? Now, again, somewhere that's open, that has space, it's not like stuck in a little cluttered corner or in like a cupboard, you want this energy to radiate. So it really depends on your situation. Um, if you have animals running around or little kids running around, it may not be ideal to stick it right in the middle of your coffee table, but um, some people love to put um, crystal grids in their living room. So the living room can really amplify energy. Um, if you're looking to do crystal grid to help increase your 
work or your sales, putting your crystal grid in your office is another great way. So really there's not a right place or a wrong place. It's really depending on your personal situation um, and how big or how small you want it. So if you have a big space and you have lots of room to do it, make a gigantic big crystal grid and it'll power up your house. Um, again, some people have smaller spaces or not a lot of room. So again, you don't need a hundred different crystals to do this. Again, you can make a crystal grid with only one type of crystal, such as clear quartz, for example. You've made really beautiful ones with that. Um, I will say, though, that if you are doing multiple crystal grids, I do recommend making sure they are in separate rooms because you you don't want them intersecting or taking on the energies from the other grids. So I would recommend one crystal grid per room. <laughs> now, how long should you leave your crystal grid up? Again, this is all depending on the intention and what it is you're choosing to set this grid up for. Some people set up a grid during meditation and they take it down an hour later. Um, other people like to set up a grid and have it there permanently. Some people like to put their grids up for a couple months or a couple weeks. It really all boils down to like what you're intending to do with this grid, what your intentions are, and maybe you're making a grid for other people as well. So maybe you're working with that individual person for that one day. So again, you can either leave this crystal grid up or you can take it down whenever you would like. So now that you have your crystal grid all ready to go and you're happy with your lovely art piece, uh, we do have to activate your grid. Now this is different from when we were charging the stones. With activating the grid, we are bringing the energy of all the stones together and we're amplifying and putting that intention into the grid. And this can be done one with meditation, but a really common way to activate your crystal grid is using a wand um, or again any kind of crystal that has a tip here now if you don't have access or you have any crystal wands or crystals that have a tip such as this or a point you can also use your finger so something that's always available um, if you don't have these tools now again when you're doing um, the activation of the grid you want to start with the center stone and you want to work on stating your intention so you ask for your other spirit guides source energy unconditional love to help um, support this intention that you're putting out there and again you start with the center stone and you're just drawing the energy up to all the other stones and linking your grid And you want to end it back at that center stone and saying a final thing such as, and so it is done, or so mote be, or kind of that final statement closing all the energy um, in that crystal grid so it can radiate that specific intention. And again, if you feel more guided to activate your crystal grid through meditation, um, a lovely way to do it as well. You can just imagine the beautiful source energy, light energy entering into your crown and radiating through your body, through your heart chakra, and just see that crystal grid beaming with light, beaming with energy, um, especially in that middle stone, the center stone, and then radiating that energy out. So you can do this visually through um, your intentions and meditation as well. One important note um, to kind of take out of if you are creating a crystal grid and looking to leave it up for an extended length of time, I do recommend charging that grid up, you know, every day or every couple of days and just making, um, you know, intensifying and making that energy nice and powerful and continuing throughout the time that this crystal grid is up in your home. So before we wrap this video up, I did want to touch base a little bit on taking your crystal down and dismantling that. Um, now, when you're done with your grid and you're ready to remove it or disassemble it, do this with sincerity, integrity. Um, don't just take all your crystals and throw them into a box. Um, I recommend taking it down the way you put it up. 
So you want to start with the center stone, remove that, remove the surrounding stones, and then your intention stones, and so forth. So again, take this down, um, you know, send gratitude and love, like put your put your heart into this. This is um, all about your intentions, all about creating that beautiful manifestation that you're drawing into your reality here. So I wanted to thank all you guys who tuned in to watch this video. I wish you all the best on your crystal grid creations. Um, I would love to hear your feedback. If you guys built your own crystal grids, I'd love to see them. I think they're beautiful pieces of art and so much, I feel like love goes, love and effort goes into making these lovely creations. So I'm sending you all lots of love and blessings. And until next time, bye for now.